guys, my name is Christy Ritchie from Greenleaf Chop Shop. Thanks for coming inside my kitchen and we're going to talk about all the different uses of a chef knife. So go get yours and let's go to town. Now everyone has their favorites. For me it's clothes, so these are mine. Um, and as you can see there's a wide variety and frankly there's probably about 20 other types that Global make that are all versions of these. But to me, this is plenty. Uh, and if I was working at home and if I was talking to a home chef, I would do one of the chef knife one bread knife and one of a paring knife. Both of these are paring knives, but depending on how comfortable you are, that three alone would be totally fine for at home. But for me, I like to have a little bit more fun, so we're gonna go with a little bit more variety. Now, basically the way that I would walk through this, if I'm doing something super delicate, like cutting strawberries up, I would use one of my two paring knives. If I'm trying to do very delicate, intricate knife work, I'm gonna use the smaller of the two, but for something like a strawberry where I'm just gonna take the top off and then cut it up, this one I have a wider base to it, more um, coverage, not as delicate, totally fine. And just easily go like that. This second one that I have here is a serrated utility knife. I could use it for the same thing if I wanted to. It's a little bit longer though, so if I wanted to do something like my avocado, I can use it so I can go around my avocado. The serrated side of it, it just helps you get in a little bit easier without having to use so much force, especially when it comes to avocados, because there's certain times of year where that skin doesn't like to let you in. So that would be one that I would use my serrated utility knife for. Now, a true utility knife looks more like this. And this one is used a lot for mincing herbs, chopping herbs, or anything that you're doing a lot of chopping, like vegetables. So if I was gonna do all of my mushrooms, I would use my utility knife because for me then, it's a flat, there is no rocking motion needed from the backside, just from the front. I can keep my hand in one spot and just keep going through. Now, a chef knife can do the exact same thing, but for herbs and chopping vegetables, I find that this one gives me more stability and this is my favorite to use. So my guys always actually peel down our carrots ahead of time, but every so often when I'm getting ready to chop, I see that they forgot a spot. The great thing about a nice sharp knife is I use it as my peeler, and then I don't even have to go back and grab one. In fact, I take less amount off than if I were to with a peeler. Then I can cut this down, cut that down. That's all the waste I now have. Put that off to the side, and if I cut down, These, I'm gonna would then lay them out on my grill as such, and I can use my same knife to then pick them back up and transfer them to my next product. So it's all in one. You can peel, you can chop, and you can use as a spatula. So whenever you're using a knife, no matter what one you want, you want to make sure that you have a good grip on it right here. Everyone has a different way that they want to hold. Some people put a finger out this way. Some people try to hold back further. For me, I get a good grip with a thumb pointing finger right here, and I don't put my finger out. I don't feel like that's a good guide. Although beginners sometimes find that it helps them to guide the knife so that they don't cut their fingers. But for me, nice tight grip right here so that it balances off well. And at this point, you'd never want the top of your knife to leave the cutting board after this. So if you're gonna slice, dice, or do anything, it's a rocking motion. So this part never leaves my cutting board. You've all gone to restaurants where you've heard this happen. And it kills me. That's not chopping, folks. All right, if I'm gonna chop this, I don't want my blade to ever leave my cutting board for multiple reasons. When you lift your blade, look, you can see it becomes inconsistent. When I don't lift my blade, it's more consistent. Less noise and also faster. And frankly, you're less likely to cut yourself. So after you've been using your knife for a while, you realize it's not as sharp as it used to be. And it's harder to get through that tomato, harder to get through that vegetable. In that scenario, what you want to do is you want to make sure that you're putting it on a steel on a regular basis. A steel would look like one of these. And what you do with the steel is you're actually honing the blade. You're not sharpening it, but you're bringing it back to the sharp edge it already has. This one is actually ceramic. And depending on the type of the knife you use will depend on which of the steels you use. So this is a, a typical steel. And this one is actually on the finer edge. There's fine, medium, and coarse, just like you would find a stone. And then I have ceramic because Globals prefer to have a ceramic one. 
and you would use this on a daily basis, maybe a couple times if you're working on something for a couple hours, you would use this intermediately to actually keep that edge there. But once you've lost the edge completely, this isn't gonna bring it back. All right, so when you need to bring it back, that's when you're gonna put it on a stone. Now, there are all different types of stones. The most basic would be a two-sided, where you have very fine on one side, medium to coarse on the other side. There are water stones, there are oil stones, there are the ones that rotate that have four edges, sides to it. Um, whatever you feel the most comfortable with, it all boils down to the angle. Making sure that you use the same angle, whatever it is your preference, use the same angle for the entire length of the knife. So if I was trying to take, same thing goes for the steel. If I'm using this steel and I'm running it, I want to do the same angle from start of the heel all the way down to the tip of the blade. And then you want to do it on both sides, equal amounts. If you do one side more than the other, your blade's actually going to feel that way. One side's going to be sharp and the other side's going to be dull. Same thing goes when you're putting it on a stone. If you're working it on a stone, and you're gonna work it down, make sure you have the proper angle and make sure you hit that same angle that you're going from all the way from heel to tip. Same, all the way across, same pressure all the way across. And then also reverse it. And after you've done it a few times, you end up finding your rhythm and it doesn't feel so awkward and you can do it very quickly. Thanks guys for coming inside my kitchen today. Hope you guys enjoyed. Remember, find that chef knife that is your favorite one and let's get it done.